hello students today we will discuss laws of friction uh, it is very important that one should know the laws of friction if he wants to solve some numerical on friction chapter so let us start with the first statement what he says friction always acts to oppose the motion of free body or its tendency to move frictional force acts tangential to the surfaces in contact suppose we have a rigid body and it is resting on a surface and suppose some force is applied on the rigid body and the tendency of that force is to uh, move this particular body towards right but suppose this particular body is not moving why it is not moving on upon the application of this particular force because frictional force developed between the contacting surfaces and from the first law we have found that this particular friction force acts up opposite to the direction of motion of the body and uh, we show that particular friction force always tangential to the surface next thing if free static friction is acting the value of the frictional force may vary from zero to the maximum value depending upon the resultant force tending to cause motion now this is a very important part to understand suppose there is a body which is resting on a surface and uh, some force is applied on that particular body and that particular force has some component along the surface or tangential to the surface so tendency of that particular force will be to uh, move the body in this case towards right but uh, suppose the body is not moving why it is not moving because frictional force developed between the contacting surfaces now this frictional force will have some value which will vary from zero to the maximum value means if we will increase this force further this particular friction force will also increase to a certain certain value we call that value as the limiting friction or the maximum friction available between the contacting surfaces now if you will increase this particular force further then what will happen that maximum value of frictional force will be overcome by the force and there will be a motion of the body so this thing we must understand but in this particular uh, uh, point what he says that uh, when we apply some force on a body and uh, uh, suppose that the, there is a component of the force along the surface of the uh, uh, along the surface on which on which body is resting then what will happen uh, frictional force will have some value that will vary from zero to maximum value and we call that maximum value as limiting friction and as long as this body is not moving under the effect of this particular force whatever friction develops we call that friction as static friction now what next he says the maximum value of static friction that is limiting friction fm that is the limiting friction when motion is about to take place is equal to mu s n so we represent that as fm is equal to mu s n where fm is the maximum uh, static friction you can say available and mu s is the coefficient of static friction n is the normal pressure which uh, acts uh, at 90 degrees to the surface which is always uh, which opposes which, which is the result of the weight of the body now what is the next point he says the maximum value of available friction force fm is independent of the area of surfaces in contact this is a very important part to understand students often get confused that if uh, there is large area there will be a large uh, frictional force no so what he says the maximum value of available friction force is independent of the area of the surfaces in contact so we have to understand that friction is always independent of the area of the surfaces in contact friction always depends upon the coefficient of friction or the peaks and values or the irregularities which are there in between the con contacting surfaces fine but uh, it don't depend upon it doesn't depend upon uh, the area in contact this is a next point to understand now what he says in the fifth point if the kinetic friction is acting the frictional force is constant at its limiting value now one thing to understand as i said earlier if we increase this particular force further what will happen friction force will also increase to a certain value we call that as the maximum value limiting friction if you will increase p further then what will happen this particular force will be able to overcome the maximum frictional force available then what will happen there will be a motion of this particular body in this case towards right so once motion happens what happens with the static friction get converted into kinetic friction and what he says over here if kinetic friction is acting 
the frictional force is constant at its, at its limiting value so we have to understand if there is a motion of the body or there is a motion between the uh, two surfaces in contact then whatever friction force is developed we call that friction for as force as kinetic friction and value of that kinetic friction is always constant now what next he says the kinetic friction is equal to mu k n so what is uh, uh, the formula for kinetic friction fk is equal to mu k n mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction and is the normal pressure so in the last point what he says the angle between the total reaction and its normal component uh, normal pressure is called the angle of friction the tangent of this angle is known as coefficient of friction now uh, suppose uh, there is an inclined surface and the body is resting on that inclined surface so its weight will act in downward direction vertical downward direction and it will receive a normal pressure that will act as uh, at 90 degrees to the surface and uh, friction force the tendency of the body is to move down so friction force will act in opposite direction see we have shown the friction force tendential to the surface now if i apply the triangle law here then i have to show another vector uh, i will call that as total reaction r so what he says over here the angle between the total reaction and its normal component so this angle between the total reaction and the normal pressure this particular angle is called phi and we call this as angle of friction and uh, if i take tan of this particular triangle if i say tan phi what is tan phi it is perpendicular upon base so perpendicular over here is f and what is base base is n so we say we can say that if i am dealing with static friction so this will be angle of static friction phi s tan phi s will be equal to mu s n because we have learned that if fm is acting which is a uh, static friction maximum value of static friction available that is equal to mu s n so i have replaced fm by mu s n so divided by n so from here we will get mu s so see these terms are written that there is a relation between angle of friction and coefficient of friction that relation is tan phi s is equal to mu s tan phi k is equal to mu k so these uh, uh, seven points you should keep in your mind and these will definitely help you when you will solve some problems related to friction in the next videos i will discuss about uh, the various problems of friction chapter thank you very much